In this video, we will introduce the idea of signal-to-noise ratio and talk about how it's defined and why it is so important. So to introduce the topic, I have created a signal. And this might be a signal that I'm interested in. Perhaps it is a, uh, a sensor output as a function of time. Perhaps it is uh, uh, music. It's basically something that might change as a function of time. And in general, I would like to be able to know exactly what this signal is because I need to measure something exactly or I would like my music to sound beautiful and distortion free. But oftentimes in the real world I'll have either extrinsic or intrinsic noise and so instead of having my signal I end up with something that looks sort of like this. So instead of having a nice exact waveform I have a waveform that wiggles around a lot and sometimes it deviates from my signal enough to be quite noticeable and uh, it just basically makes it hard to figure out what my signal was. This happens almost universally. It turns out that this sort of phenomenon is one of the limiting factors in a communication system. Uh, the fact that there is noise added to signals makes it impossible to transmit infinite amounts of information over a uh, finite bandwidth communication system, and that's essentially due to noise. So what we'd like to do is we would like to be able to characterize the relative strength of the signal and the noise. And we do this through what's called a signal-to-noise ratio, SNR. S stands for signal, N stands for noise, R stands for ratio. There are several different types of signal-to-noise ratios that we use. One is called a power signal-to-noise ratio, where you would have the signal, or the average signal power in volts squared divided by the average noise power, again in volts squared, and typically we'll give the average signal power the symbol S and the average noise power the, the symbol N. So you can represent that as S over N. Now sometimes we want to talk about our noise and our signal in terms of voltage rather than power. So we may have a voltage SNR. Here, actually, let's change colors for this, where this is defined as the RMS, the root mean squared signal voltage, divided by the RMS Oops, got that one wrong. The RMS noise voltage. Okay. So you would expect these two to be related because uh, if you'll remember, or hopefully you remember, either from your previous experience or a previous video, that the average signal power, this guy here, is given or can be computed by squaring the RMS signal voltage. And the average noise power can be computed by squaring the RMS noise voltage. So it turns out that a um, signal to noise ratio which is defined in terms of powers, can be expressed in terms of whoops, a signal to noise ratio that's defined in terms of voltage as the 
following relationship. The power or the power signal to noise ratio is the square of the voltage signal to noise ratio. That turns out to be quite useful. Um, it also turns out that a very convenient way to describe a signal to noise ratio is in units of decibels, which are abbreviated dB. And basically, I guess I should point out, a signal to noise ratio is a unitless quantity because I have power in the numerator and power in the denominator or voltage in the numerator and voltage in the denominator. So a signal to noise ratio is a um, is a uh, a unitless quantity. It's quite often helpful to express it in terms of dB, which is a, essentially a logarithmic scale. So a signal to noise ratio expressed in terms of dB is given as 10 times log to the base 10 of my power signal to noise ratio and it's also 20 log to the base 10 of my voltage signal to noise ratio. Okay. So um, hopefully you feel good about this because you know that the voltage signal to noise ratio, or I'm sorry, you know that the power signal to noise ratio is obtained by squaring the voltage signal to noise ratio. And so because I have a log and I'm squaring things, that too comes out in front and I get basically this result. Okay. So signal to noise ratios are very useful. Um, as an example of actually uh, manipulating some signal to noise ratios, let's look at the following. Suppose that uh, to begin with my signal to noise ratio is 1. Okay. So basically my noise power is the same as my signal power and this is generally not a good thing. It means that your your uh, signal to noise or it means that your signal is typically being swallowed up in the noise and it's very hard to get it back. If I express this in terms of dB, this is 10 log 10 of 1. Log 10 of 1 is 0, so this is 0 dB. Okay. And it turns out that this is true either for a power signal to noise ratio or a voltage signal to noise ratio because uh, uh, if the ratio of the powers is 1, then the ratio of the voltages is 1 too. So that's sort of boring. Let's suppose then that I have a signal to noise ratio, a power signal to noise ratio of 100. Okay, this is a much better signal to noise ratio, although actually not really good enough to do a lot of things that you would want to do with a signal. Okay, the voltage signal to noise um, ratio. Well, here actually I'm sort of mixing my metaphors here. Um, let's draw this guy instead as an SNRV to show that this is a voltage signal to noise ratio. If the power signal to noise ratio is 100, the voltage signal to noise ratio is the square root of 100 or 10. And then if I express this in dB, since I have a voltage signal to noise ratio, I'm going to have 20 log to the base 10 of 10, which is 1. So this will just be 20 dB. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Okay. 
So that would give me um, a signal to noise, a power signal to noise ratio of 100 is uh, 20 dB. Now I can compute this also directly um, because the log base 10 of 100 is 2. Multiply that by 10 and I get 20. So you can see that if I use dB, it doesn't matter whether I'm talking about a power or a voltage signal to noise ratio, the dB uh, expression of them is the same. So one last um, piece of this example and then we'll call this done. If my signal to noise ratio say power is equal to 2, so my signal power is twice the noise power. When I express this in dB, the log to the base 10 of 2 is 0 0.301. If I multiply that by 10, I get 3.01 or roughly 3 dB. I should put the dB in here too to make sure there's no confusion. If I look at the signal to noise ratio of one half, so my signal is only half as powerful as my noise, the log of one half, log base 10 of one half, is minus 0.301. So this then is minus 0.301 dB, which again is minus 3 dB. So quite often, you'll see things talked about either signal-to-noise ratios or ratios of different types of powers or voltages. And you'll hear people say that um, I'm looking for a 3 dB gain or a, a minus 3 dB attenuation or something like that. And what it means, a 3 dB gain corresponds to a ratio that's 2. So something is twice the value of something else. A minus 3 dB uh, gain or attenuation means that something is half the value of something else. And so you'll see this uh, talked about quite a bit in a lot of different contexts. Uh, when we talk about uh, the power um, being output, uh, or the power that is uh, being output, say, by a filter, quite often you'll talk about the filter's bandwidth in terms of its 3 dB uh, frequencies. Those are the frequencies where the filter has attenuated a uh, signal or noise by 3 dB or by a factor of 2. So there it is, signal to noise ratios. Hopefully this makes lots of, lots of sense. Thanks for watching.